episode 24 of my knitting podcast. My name is Marlene and here I talk about all things knitting, um, some spinning and what I've been up to just with my making lately. Some sewing <laughs> has also entered the, yeah, um, my crafting. Uh, right about now I feel like I might burst from all of my creativity but I'm also extremely tired <laughs> today from this week so I'm recording today it is a rainy Sunday here in Marburg and um, I'm just currently working on one of my whips which I'm very excited to show you guys because it is something like nothing I've done before <laughs> a very special uh, a very long-term project too but yeah, before I get into all of my whips, I do have a couple of finished objects, which I want to, to talk to you all about. Um, I will be sharing some spinning, some sewing, like I said, a couple of acquisitions, which I'm really excited about. And yeah, that's what's gonna happen today. This is also my one year podcast anniversary. So to everyone who's been here, for a year already. I am so thankful for you guys. Thank you for sticking with me if you have been here since the beginning. Thank you for coming along if you've just recently or within the last year have joined the channel. I appreciate it so, so much. Um, I'm just right now a bit overwhelmed with all my <laughs> advent swapping, gifting, all the things I want to do for December too. So. I will be putting a pause on, um, I'm, I'm hosting a cal over on Instagram, so there is so much going on that I didn't feel like organizing even another giveaway for this channel. I think I've, I've done quite a lot of things like that in the past and I, um, I do want to do some more in the future because like I said, I appreciate all so much. Let's get into what I'm actually wearing. This is the Stick Season Sweater by Rebecca Klo. I tested this for her. It has just been released a couple of days ago. Thank you so much to people who have been sending me messages about being um, inspired by my version and wanting to knit a version very similar to this. Obviously my version is heavily uh, inspired by Rebecca's own version. So I don't know, it's kind of like a full, full circle moment. Um, this is knitted up in size five and it is made with Explore Knits and Fibers. Uh, Rockies DK and Daybreak. I got this yarn at Flock 2023 actually and so it is an even more special project. Um, right now my two latest finished sweater projects have both been with Flock yarn and so uh, yeah maybe that's if that isn't telling you guys how much I love this festival and all the people involved uh, with it I don't know what does. <laughs> But yeah, um, so this was the Daybreak in Rocky's DK. Um, Rebecca has actually used Daybreak on the natural DK base, which makes her version a bit more toned down because the natural non-superwash DK fiber takes the dye differently than the superwash version that I'm currently wearing. Uh, I did play and lose a game of yarn chicken on this sweater, which had uh, the consequence of having to go to Instagram and ask people if there were any leftover daybreak skeins floating around the EU because obviously shipping to the US is always quite expensive um, and not very reasonable for just one skein um, and so yeah I uh, fortunately found uh, an online knitting uh, acquaintance of mine who's Ulla Knits. I talked to Talk, talked about her before. She also has a hand-dyed uh, business um, which is called Little Fibers. I um, featured one of the skeins that I actually bought from her uh, after the after realizing she had that um, store. I also uh, ordered a skein of yarn from her to be uh, shipped with the Daybreak skein and I've actually given that skein away since then. I will, like I said, talk about all my um, advent and yarn, sock yarn swapping at the end of the video, but just to mention it here, um, yeah, I have gifted that yarn that I bought from her. 
So she was so kind and um, sell me one of her, actually it was a Leave No Trace yarn that she had no intention or purpose yet for. And it was very close to daybreak. So I have used this in the uh, ribbings of the sweater. So the bottom body ribbing and the sleeve ribbing. Actually, you can see that whenever I'm raising my arms, you can see that this is actually uh, a bracelet length or even a bit shorter um, sweater, which this is really a new thing for me. <laughs> I don't like sweaters to have um, shorter sleeves. I really like them to go to like the beginning of my hand at least or even a bit further than that. So if I pull it down, I can do that. But naturally it does ride up again. Uh, I have blocked this uh, obviously before wearing, but um, I've actually found this to be not too bad. So the shorter sleeves. Um, I, like I said, I was playing a game of yarn chicken. I only wanted to use the extra skein and the ribbings. And so that's just naturally what happened. Um, but because this is just the Rockies DK held single, which it is a very light DK weight, is more of a sport weight actually. Um, it is a very light sweater and because I am going to a location that is a bit warmer than it is in Germany at this point in time in two weeks, <coughs> hint, hint, um, and I was talking to someone who I'm going there with about what we're bringing and what we're going to going to wear, I actually found this to be a super nice addition to my wardrobe, having some more lightweight um, and shorter sleeve sweaters. This actually happened with both of my test knits recently that I have messed up needle size on my sleeves and then also both of them had shorter sleeves, which like I said, this has not been a thing in the past. I've always knitted my sleeves to the correct length and I really like that. Like the way I have done it in the past is my preferred way of doing it. But the the two recent sweaters, so Kalani Blouse and Stick Season, they both have a bit shorter sleeves and are pretty lightweight. And so they are perfect for some way around like 16 degree uh, Celsius weather and just maybe layering it with a um, long sleeve, very thin layer. Maybe put on a, wet, a vest, put on one of my, I don't know, my barber jacket or my i have these like very thin puffer jacket i can put in some pictures like i said i wanted to do a dress kind of like how i dress my knits video i have not been able to do that yet because i feel like putting up the camera and like modeling stuff i wasn't sure if i how i felt about that and i i will have to think about that some more maybe it'll be more so a winter inspired like how I wear my knits but I thought I could talk to you all about how I wear my knits and just put up pictures I know uh, some of you have said that they appreciate pictures so I have a couple of different maybe like three different jackets which are more so um, good to wear if it's not like beneath uh, zero degrees Celsius like I said uh, it's more like a autumn wardrobe and so I've been just combining these like sweaters there that, that are great to wear during work too because I cannot wear a really heavy sweater and then I don't know pick up packages of of yarn and and carry them around the store and like um I don't know I've been this is more so uh, a physical job too than my other job was before and so yeah um I think it is nice that is what I'm trying to tell you with this tangent. I think it is nice to have different varieties of thicknesses and styles of knits in your wardrobe. I've recently posted this picture on my Instagram actually about all of my hand knit sweaters and cardigans that I've made so far. And I thought it was really interested, interesting to see that there weren't any patterns that I had done that were too similar to the next one. So I think I have a quite a wide variety of knits. And so if it is a more lightweight knit, I do actually like uh, the sweater sleeve not to be um, super long too. So it just needs to be balanced. I mean, maybe that is the whole thing. 
I think if it's balanced, it'll fit somewhere in my wardrobe. So yeah, I hope I've put up some pictures for you guys um, and showing off how I've been wearing my knits uh, recently. Like I said, I've not yet <laughs> managed to make a very artsy and very well thought out how I wear my knits video, even though I would love to. If you want something like that, go over to some of the channels I have featured recently within my vlogs people have mentioned and uh, recommended to you guys because they do stuff like that so well for like Casey, Anna, um, yeah there are people who can do that and I will work on being able to do that too so uh, my next other finished object because this was already featured last week but I or two weeks ago in the episode I wasn't able to um, wear both of them. So today was this sweater's moment to shine. I love it. I love the color. I am very excited about other people knitting it now and yeah, just everyone being Noah Khan. Um, I don't know, super fans. <laughs> I'm so excited to go to a concert of his in February with a friend of mine. Um, and that's going to be so special. And I'm obviously going to wear my sweater for that occasion. So next up is my first very, very big gift knit this year. And it's the Northland sweater by Petite Knit. It's finished. It has two sleeves. I even sewed in a Petite Knit label. So this was made with Drops Alaska um, in, I will link the colorway because I do not remember. It's more of like a brownish gray, uh, kind of like mottled color. The one uh, modification that I did do is, so I put in uh, a pearl ridge, uh, which I got from some of the other petite knit patterns that she has published before. Uh, so I got that idea from her two and then I folded the collar because I wanted it this is kind of like an uh, Aran weight um, yarn and so I just wanted the collar not to be too thin in comparison to how thick the rest of the sweater was um, feeling and so I hope to be uh, tomorrow be taking some pictures with my partner and with him wearing this sweater because I only took a couple in our in our bedroom which were in really nice quality but if that's the only thing I have when I am trying to like edit and finish and upload this video you'll get those but if um, we get up to some kind of like a how would you call that like a little photo shoot <laughs> that would be so nice because I do actually have um, kind of like a matching sweater it's the sweater number 23 and it's made in heavy uh, merino by knitting for olive it's more of like a beigey um like a light brown but they look i mean the style is similar and so i think that would make really nice matching sweater photographs i'm not sure this is kind of like a settled shoulder and then um there are some raglan increases underneath uh the arms but yeah, I mean, I'm so, so pleased with how this relaxed. I'm not sure if you remember me talking about the Northland sweater and it was so bunched up, like right where your collarbone sits on your body. And I was really not sure <laughs> if this was gonna work out and if I had to rip out the collar again and change something. But as you can see, it is draping and falling perfectly in my opinion if I do say so myself um, and so yeah I'm really happy with it there was a couple of slight fearful moments um, when I had already finished the body I was measuring it on his body a lot of times I was making him try this on so many times to make it fit really good on his body and then when I had finished the body and cast it on one sleeve I was making him try it on again and the body just seemed too short 
and I was panicking because I had done an Italian sewn bind off already on all of these stitches. And uh, these are a lot of stitches. <laughs> and so I was like, everyone was telling me like his mom, <laughs> they were making jokes about it. And I didn't find them to be super funny because I was like, if I have to redo it, I don't know if I could because I want to spend my time on other things other than having to open up a thousand stitch bind off and redoing it. No, but I wasn't looking forward to that outcome of the situation. And so I blocked the heck out of this sweater. And I think it worked perfectly. It fits him well. It could be like one or two centimeters longer. I will give them that, my, my critics, my haters, my family. <laughs> Uh, but he's happy with it and I told him if it's not like if you're not happy I'll open it up it could I don't know like take me a couple of weeks because I would put it in the naughty corner work on some of my other stuff and then get back to it but I told him tell me if you do think it is too short but honestly I was able to block in like six centimeters after the fact uh, and I thought it was really nice uh, the the way it was sitting on his body. So that is my finished boyfriend sweater. The second finished object is actually also for him. I would say he is a very lucky guy this year. <laughs> and uh, it is actually going to be for his birthday. He does not know that. I have posted this picture on my Instagram and have been talking like casually about doing some gift netting for Christmas. So I do think he thinks this is for my dad or brother or someone because it is quite a big foot size and none of the women in my life have size 42, 43 EU sized feet. And so this is for him. This is another Sunday sock and I've put on a label already. This says for Hannes from Marlene. Um, and yeah, these are by uh, a friend of mine who she's called Natalia she's from Marburg and I always buy her seasonal um, gifting cards I really love them I don't have any with me right now but I've just recently purchased another pack of 20 or something from her she draws them by hand and then uh, so the prototype she draws by hand and then she uh, prints them and so, yeah, I've put them on my Sunday socks for gift knitting for Christmas and his birthday, which is at the end of um, November. And I can't wait to give them to him because, like I said, he is very knit worthy. So I've made all the Sunday socks I have made recently with the Sunness Garn Perfect. And I have used the instructions in Petite Knit's um, pattern to see how long I could do the leg. Uh, to fit the size for the foot so if I was doing the men's size or it doesn't have to be gendered but like the the bigger sizes of the pattern which I think it goes up to a 43 or 44 45 something like that you'll have to shorten the leg in order to be um, okay with just using two skeins of the perfect which they have 50 grams each and it's an eight ply sock yarn has some um, percentage of nylon in it too to make them uh, last which I think is a good thing for gift knitting and people who are not knitters themselves to be able to wash them and stuff like that so yeah that was my next finished object I'm so happy to have that finished I'm gonna take it um, I've actually surprised him by booking a little getaway over his birthday. He's not the person to be into celebrating his own birthday a lot. So I think he was just looking forward to get away with me for a couple of days and maybe go to a, a wellness, uh, like a, a sauna. I don't, I'm not actually sure how you would call that in English, but it's like a, in Germany, we call it a therme. And so I have booked a little tiny house on a field. It is not too far, like we're only gonna drive like two hours from where we live, but it's gonna be special to just get away and, and be in this like tiny house and put on the fire maybe and 
um, yeah, and just maybe knit and read to each other and take our favorite um, uh, game, which is Yahtzee, Yahtzee. And uh, I don't know, go out to eat or maybe just make a tea and sit there and look outside and cuddle. I don't know, that's what I'm like, manifesting and I will obviously gift the socks to him there which will mean that he'll have toasty socks throughout the whole trip which I said it's only going to be two two nights but yeah I think that's going to be special so next finished object is not knitting but spinning and it is my first skein of hand spun yarn I'm not sure if you were able to see it in the corner throughout the first part of the video and if this was kind of like a um teasing you a bit if you're a spinner too or interested in spinning but yeah this is my first hand spun skein and it's so crazy for me to be able like I made this I don't know why when I'm tearing up a bit I'm like yes I made this with my own hands and I'm just looking at my it's not my spinning wheel yet but I have my my co-worker she suggested uh oh she offered to uh sell it to me because she does not have the space in her apartment to um, keep it. She has an e-spinner now and she just works on that. And uh, it's like I said, it's a wool maker's bliss. Uh, people have referred to it as the Ikea wheel since it is um, easy to get uh, to put together and you can get uh, parts for it if some parts are um, yeah, broken or stuff like that but she said that none of the parts have been broken so far she have had it for six years before and so yeah we're, we've just been talking about prices and I will see um, to save up the money maybe ask, ask for some money for Christmas to to get this wheel because I have been enjoying my spinning time so much recently I've been I've just been spinning in the mornings whenever I make myself a cup of coffee. I've been spinning like 15 minutes before work and before getting ready. And yeah, so this has been so much fun. Uh, the coworker I've been referring to, her name is Katrin, and she has also, um, yeah, helped me figure out how to ply. And I've just done this spin because this is only a bit more than half of my fiber. I have, I still have some of the fiber left and I already started um, on the bobbin again to spin up the rest of the fiber maybe to give you guys uh, a close-up look this is a 85 percent corydale and 15 percent merino i've actually uh, put into my maker's notebook since i did love this so much when sophia gave this to me at flock 2023 this first year's flock i was so honored and uh, her telling me um and uh Chelsea at the time how much she she loved our our podcast and how she wanted to give this to us was very special uh, and I have used it for a project planning more so than putting in my actual whip uh, and project notes since I do use Ravelry for that most of the time I just feel like right now I have um, I don't have the resources to put my uh, notes into writing and then put it into the app too since if I'm um, like on the go it's just easier to put it in my phone uh, on Ravelry directly. I do have another notes like knitting notes book from Leine uh, and I have only used like half of it mostly in the beginning half of this year and then I don't know if I just cast it on too many projects or if yeah I'm more so becoming a digital note taker just when I was in college and like in university I did uh, I don't know like my calendar my journal was was so important to me I was taking notes all the time I'm still having like a um, an album for my photography and for all of the things that I um, I don't know like stickers and receipts and flight tickets and stuff like that uh, cards and uh, I will put that I, I'm scrapbooking that too but just when it comes to notes on my knitting just like grams and needle sizes and notes and 
I've been mainly using Ravelry for that, but with my spinning, I thought I might be able to put it in my maker's notebook by making treasures um, that I got gifted by Sophia. So I guess add gifted is in order here. Um, so uh, I did do, let me show you the yarn so you can see it. So this has turned out to be a two ply DK weight because I have put it around my Swift, which I do have the Chow Gu Swift. And when I was, um, after spinning it, I plied it and then I put it to, to skein it up. Um, I put it around my Swift and I put it around 74 times and that was on the biggest setting, so 155 centimeters, uh, where I had my Swift on that circumference pretty much. And that meant that I got 114 meters um, before uh, putting it into the water and soaking it. And I did also weigh it and it was 85 grams, which 85 grams uh, per 140 meter. I, I didn't do the math like super correct correctly, but pretty much 50 grams to 100 meters is bang on DK. And so 58 to 140 meters, like I said, I didn't do, it would have been pretty easy to do the math and maybe I'll, I'll, I'll do it and put in the correct like meter, meterage per 50 grams, but it was around about a DK weight. And so I, that's how I knew even more about my spinning and getting to know my spinning and like getting to know the specs behind it is just so satisfying and I love it. So yeah, that's what I put in here. The spin fiber was actually from Friendly Sheep, handmade by Bonne. It is from Lomar in Germany and I got it from the Westerwälder Wolfest, which I went to uh, with my colleagues uh, about a month ago. So right about before I started working at the yarn shop. I put in uh, a trial kind of ply uh, that my friend and co-worker did before. I guess this looks a bit more thick and thin than her trial uh, thing, which will, I guess, would be more of a fingering weight, but still I, I wanted to put it in. And yeah, this is my first spinning project and I'm so proud and excited. Actually, my uh, boss, Melanie, she asked me if I, was planning on knitting with it or if I would be keeping it and I told her that I didn't know <laughs> which uh, it's not a very good answer is it um, I think the idea of keeping it uh, really intrigues me to see maybe uh, compare it to my second skein and I have so many other projects I'm like I said I'm bursting with creativity I'm bursting with ideas planning and there's just so many things that I want to do so I don't think it's a big problem um, for me to wait with that project and just um, leave the kind of like the spun up fiber and plied fiber and leave it to the side for a bit before working with it. Uh, I've shared some accounts that have inspired me on my spinning journey so far in my last episode and I just wanted to say thanks to everyone who's been chatting uh, with me about this. Uh, again, two people that have inspired me to take some notes about my knitting too. I've mentioned Maya before in my latest video, but I wanted to share a post she's posted on her stories about one of these like cards that have all the information about the fiber and her intended weight of spinning and what she's doing to the spin. So that is uh, another information I wanted to put in my book, but have forgotten so far. Um, because I was doing a short forward, as I have heard this technique called before. So it's a, a worsted spun short forward. I'm, <laughs> I really hope I'm not saying completely like things that don't make any sense, but that's what I have learned, I think. And so she and also Madison Montes, I think is her name. She also has a YouTube podcast, which I for such a long time wanted to get into, but I'm, yeah, 
recently I didn't have the time, but tonight I'm gonna watch some of her videos. I'm just gonna make that promise to myself. But I really, really love following her on Instagram for some time. I think she's friends with Hannah, who's Pages and Pearls, um, who I've met on the inter internet too, and who's also friends with Chelsea. And so I just love how the knitting community is uh, all tangled up, pun intended. Um, and so, yeah, so Medicine has also posted, and I'll feature her post too, sorry, editing Marlene, but so many pictures to put in. Um, she has posted a similar post about how she takes notes on the spins she's doing. And because I want to be a good student, uh, no, I just want to know what I've done if I look back on it in a couple of months. And so she, those two people, again, have very much inspired my note-taking and uh, learning more about fiber and spinning. Okay, starting with my uh, works in progress. Sorry guys, I'm a bit um, sniffly today. Trying not to get sick, but also it is cold season. So yeah, um, my next work in progress is the swatch bag by Marie Scabaglade. Scabaglade. I'm probably butchering that. Um, but yeah, this has been on my making list for such a long time and I finally started it. Uh, you all know my swatch board that I usually have behind um, in the background of my um, filming process. Right now it's on this side and it looks a bit bare bones. So I will have to <laughs> knit up some more gauge swatches because I've put all my gauge swatches in this. Uh, this is actually kind of like a, a history of my making, of my knitting. Um, let me go through some of these quickly. This is my current Traveler Cardigan by Ozetta in Unspun. This is the beginning, um, um, how would you call that? It is a square for my sweet shop blanket. This is actually a a camisole that I have not yet knit up. It's in the Mercy by Phil Colana, but I had swatched for it last summer. This is my Kalani blouse. Um, this was my swatch for my Marseille sweater. Um, the swatch for my, gosh, I'm blanking right now. Uh, Portobello sweater, the swatch for my Monday sweater. This is my zipper sweater, the swatch for Hannah's possible future stick season uh, sweater, um, the swatch for my v-neck um, Harlow sweater, the swatch for my April cardigan, and then moving on to my Lento sweater, my Judy sweater. Oh no, this was actually the plan that I had before making the Northland sweater. This was by Stricke Café um, and it never came to fruition uh, because it was just a bit too difficult and I wanted the first project for Hannes to be uh, enjoyable and not too difficult. This is actually the Judy sweater. Um, my Stick Season, uh, a swatch that also never made its way into a whole garment. Uh, this was the September sweater. Uh, also, another project I've never actually made is the festival sweater and my sweater number 18. And I hope I'm not forgetting any, but also I'm not sure if this is interesting for you guys. <laughs> but yeah, I'm actually using this as um, a project bag already for the scraps that I'm using to knit the drawstring casing. I'm using heavy merino and soft silk merino, no, soft silk mohair by Knitting for Olive to do the casing. Um, I'm gonna show it to you guys a bit closer. And I'm also right now, or this morning, have been um, sewing on the lining for this. Um, I wasn't too happy with my first attempt because I was trying to put in some pockets on the inside and maybe I'd try to shoot a bit too high for my skill level in sewing and so I have started uh, or I will have to start it over but sometimes it's good to have a first attempt and then see how you can improve. So this is the one side and this is the other side. 
So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely chuffed with this. I'm using uh, a cotton, striped cotton um, lining for the inside. And like I said, this like light browny grayish um, for the casing for my drawstring. And I will use um, pretty regular drawstring material like this. I will show you another uh, sewing project that I have finished. Should have put that in my finished objects. I will <laughs> uh, shortly um, re redo that. Um, and yeah, so I, I'll, I'll show you. Yeah, I am i don't know what to say more about this. I'm really excited to show you the finished object. I'm so happy how it encompasses all the project that I have finished, started, or thought about making and then changed my mind and used the, the yarn for something else. Um, yeah, in the, in the case of the festival sweater, um, I never used that yarn for that sweater, but now I'm actually making a blanket uh, with it and I have made a, a stripe pipe sweater with it and so yeah that's just that's just very fun so uh, another finished object just quickly trying to add that is actually a sewing project and I just remembered talking about it because I'm using the drawstring um, for this too this is another project bag that I have sewn and I'm actually pretty proud of myself because this it's like a waffle PK, I think it was called. It's uh, cotton, but it's pretty difficult to work with. And this is by no means perfect, but it's, I've made it. <laughs> and that's as good as it's gonna get. It has um, my, my label in there again. And like I said, I am trying to make some, uh, to sew some presents for this uh, winter, this, gifting season which is only about one and a half months away kind of not trying to panic but I'm I'm good on I'm making pro progress on my making and yeah this is a bit shorter and smaller than the drawstring bag I made recently with the other fabric that I have shown you guys in a, in a couple of, ep of episodes ago but yeah this is uh I really like how big it is it's perfect i guess for the beginning of a project for a hat for socks um for a shawl it's not probably going to finish like um how would you say that it's not going to fit a um a big sweater project but yeah it's i think it's just really cute it reminds me of a, a pe uh so in in kindergarten or um at the beginning of my school time, we used to have bags like this for putting in my sports stuff, like my sports outfits. But yeah, now I think of it as a project bag. I'm really happy and I hope the person who will receive this is also going to be very happy with it. So yeah, sorry, I forgot about that. My next work in progress is my petal drop socks it's in my bag by knitting nelly and it is almost to the point where i am able to start the toe i've made some progress on this this has been uh my lunch hour knitting the past couple of days um i've also taken it to knitting night or uh, knit night um yesterday at the shop i was working yesterday and uh, every second Saturday we have knit nights at the shop and uh, yeah I wanted to get um, some more progress on this done so I can finish one sock before casting on another sock that I'm doing a testament for um, and yeah I'm, I'm pretty chuffed with this um, it's not too easy to show off I'm gonna finish it and then I'm gonna show you guys again um, on the blocking board which is gonna be easier uh, so far I've been really enjoying this. I've actually um, received a compliment by a fellow knitter at Knit Night yesterday. She saw me working on the sock uh, for, I don't know, like an hour and then she was like, I gotta talk to you about this and she came around the table and she was like, you gotta tell me about this pattern because I was always looking at it and it looks so nice. So compliments to you Florence who has designed this. Um, so yeah and I obviously love this project back really a lot it is my favorite yeah but I'm gonna put it away now to show you my next whip 
I'm gonna um, try and be a bit quick, quicker about the whips since there's not too much to talk about. Uh, I've started my Traveler's, um, the Traveler crew neck. Sorry, there's loads of Traveler um, things called Traveler at the moment and I get confused by that and I have to, yeah, untangle the yarn. So this is my first bottom up construction. I will try and show you a bit closer. It is worked bottom up. I have done about five centimeter, maybe it's a bit more on ribbing and now I have moved on to the stitch pattern, which is pretty easy, but it also means that there's a lot of purling involved. And so this feels like it could be a cardigan too. <laughs> where you have to uh, purl some of the rows too. Um, maybe, uh, yeah, I'm not yet sure if I'll enjoy this kind of construction because I'm actually a bit, um, yeah, I'm not looking forward to <laughs> make major mistakes on this. It's just, I've always knit my projects um, top down and I'm, I'm used to that. I have knitted one t-shirt bottom up. Um, it was for my, my cousin. So it was a, a children's uh, knit wear. And so it was quite tiny. And I felt like putting on the sleeves was a really um, difficult thing to do. <laughs> and somehow, I mean, I managed. It wasn't too difficult in the end, but I didn't enjoy it as much as the other way around. And so I'm interested to see why this is going to be constructed the way it is. I have been enjoying working on this so far. It's quite tiny. No, it's not tiny, but it's quite small needle. So this was 3.25 and now I'm working on 3.75 as recommended by Andrea Mari. I've actually wanted to make a gauge swatch uh, with this and then she said that it was supposed to be in the round and then I was like, F it, I'm just gonna cast on. I didn't wanna do a gauge swatch in the round and I was thinking if, there's anything that I would want to change I can now take like my gauge from it I wouldn't um, worry too much if it was a bit bigger if it was too small I could always rip it out again and it was basically a big gauge swatch you know what I'm trying to say so but now I'm actually uh, pretty good with gauge so in this case uh, <laughs> my decisions have worked out for me I wanted to show you uh, a little acquisition in between. This is actually a stitch marker by my friend Emma, who has now um, designed some stitch markers for Strickverliebt, which is the store that I work at in Marburg. Um, uh, at the beginning, when I when I started working there, I actually uh, introduced Emma uh, to Melanie in person. They had known of or, or about each other, I think, but. Uh, and I suggested we should be working with Emma for the shop because she was looking for in-store um, So wholesale customers, I think it's called and we're looking to expand um, that kind of uh, area in the shop um, so little knickknacks and beautiful things and so Emma is always obviously the person that came to mind I'm gonna show you this is my favorite um, this is my favorite stitch marker from um, the lineup. Uh, it's just one of five that are included in the pack and it's called Turquoise. We actually collaborated with Emma on choosing the um, stones that she then produced into the stitch marker set. So um, she asked us about which direction we wanted to go in and then we, we gave her some kind of directions and she suggested some stones like it was a collaborative process but also obviously Emma did all of the creative and hand making process um, herself but we were able to chip in with some of the things that we wanted and this like I said turquoise I love the most I am going to link the online shop and you guys seem to like Emma's stitch markers as well so yeah we now have uh, some new versions that are not at her online shop but in ours and at the shop in Marburg at the kind of physical shop is what I was trying to say okay let me have a sip of water 
Okay, moving on to the next travel project, which is actually not by the same designer, but this is by Ozetta. It's the Traveler Cardigan. It's just called the same. And I have made some progress on this. I've actually finished the back panel. So this is going to be in the back. Um, it's going to be time to pick up some stitches in the front now pretty closely. This has been not massively worked on because I have been focusing on a test knit, which I'll talk about in a second. And this is also just living here in the corner, um, which then only makes me work on it when I sit here, but also the spinning wheel is right in front of this chair. And so it is always, or right now it has been, um, they have both been, how would you say that? <laughs> Fighting for my attention. And uh, I've been, I'm knitting this with my friend Venetia from The Woolly Worker here on YouTube and on Instagram. And uh, we both decided that we didn't want this to be any rush. Uh, she has uh, knitted more on this project as I have already, but we have planned to uh, do a FaceTime again in like three weeks. And until then, I want to have um, joined the fronts or like picked up the fronts and knitted them to the same part. So I'm joined in the round at least. And I will be completely able to do that. I just need to take out some time and focus on it. But yeah, nothing much to report about that. But there is another project that I want to report about loads. <laughs> and it's... Um, I can tell that this is going to be one of my favorite projects I've ever made when I finished this. And I've made some quite significant progress on this since it is a test knit. And I want this to be finished ideally or the front, at least, I finished ideally in like a week and a half, and that should be possible. I am talking about the Stella Quilt Cushion by Laura Penrose, and this is my progress. It's so fun to knit it up. I'm actually, I'm not sure how much progress I have made since the last episode, uh, but yeah, I'm only, I only have to do two and three more squares, so uh, five more squares on the front and then knit the back. You can see I have so far woven in all of my ends on this top half and then there's just some more ends to be woven in. I will probably do that whenever I stop filming and try and put in another square, uh, at least one or two more squares today and weave in all the ends, or actually the ends have been woven in, but I haven't cut the ends. So yeah, I've, yeah, I was actually being quite good about that. Okay, well done. <laughs> so yeah, I really love the colors. Um, I wasn't actually able to move on to this square because there is supposed to be some green in it, which I also currently have cast on for another project. So I will have to either take the chan about 10 grams I need for um, the project for the sorry for the cushion project away from the beanie project that I have cast on or I will um, that's why I cast it on this one although you're like going that way um, kind of knitting it I hope I'm not giving too, um, too much away this is going to be a paid uh, for a pattern which is going to be released in a couple of weeks I guess um, but yeah it is, there are so many really helpful um, descriptions in a pattern too. And yeah, um, again, what did I want to say? Okay, so because I wasn't able to use the green, I actually changed up the colors a bit and started with this maroony color. This is actually my stick season color. This is my leftover from the Leave No Trace skein. And because I wasn't able to move into the next color, which is the green one, I did this one off before doing the rest. But like I said, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to show you uh, a close up before moving on. I'm going to show you the colors too. These are the colors that I have been using. I hope you can see them. They're in this basket by Sustrene Krene, which I really love. I love putting all my stuff in baskets. Um, and yeah, I've been using a Knit Pro Nido. Uh, these are my 
uh, old, old needles, which I've had since the beginning. I still like them. I still use them, but for like projects, like full garment projects now, I and like socks and stuff like that, I am mainly using my chow goo because I just like them more. Um, the main color I'm using is the Double Sunday. I think it's marzipan or is it almond? I'll have it in my uh, project page, uh, which is linked down below. And yeah, these are all the colors except for the green, the Macross by x and Fibers, which I'm going to show you eventually. These are all DK or fingering, which I'm holding double. Um, and yeah, I think so far this is pretty, pretty cute. And I can't wait to put it on my couch and have everyone be really careful with it when they're sitting close to it. <laughs> so this is my progress. We actually went to Ikea a couple of days ago, maybe last week, uh, last weekend, uh, because we got a new uh, living room table. I can show you a picture of our living room right now. I'm sitting in the one of the uh, corners. I'm looking at it and I love it. And when we were there, we were just looking for the um, table. We've had it uh, on our minds. So I also got a cushion uh, to put into the cushion cover. Okay, so I did forget to, t to talk about my hipster hat. I was talking to y'all about the Macross uh, on the Rockies DK base by Experience and Fibers. And I have cast it on a hipster hat by Petite Knit with it. I'm going to have to take, like I said, a weight of about 10 grams of this to put into my Stella quilt cushion. But this is going to be a great travel project, I thought. I had casted it on actually to knit on it during our knit night um, with a friend group of mine. Uh, and yeah, I got some work done on it, like maybe 15 centimeters. <laughs> But yeah, I forgot to talk about that and that is in my favorite flock bag. But yeah, let's move on with the episode. So these were all my current works in progress that I'm actively working on. I uh, have still my barber shawl and my two blankets that I'm not currently working on because I am focusing on the other stuff, but I will be um, working on the other stuff shortly too again. Um, okay. So I am just looking at my notes because I was thinking about what I wanted to talk to you all about. I have some stash enhancement. I wanted to talk to you about my advent swapping and my upcoming plan in two weeks. So let me start with advent. I've actually, I've actually received my scrappy advent swap by um, my swapping partner who um, she and I got um, matched by Rebecca from the Cray of A Knitting podcast and I think my minis are in here. Uh, she also put in loads of goodies which made me feel so bad because I had very much focused on the yarn and how it might become a fade and like I was even putting in like 12 to 13 grams although we said like 10 grams would be fine and then I put in some more like small goodies but like I didn't put in any more chocolate or tea and stuff like that because like you never know if people like that kind of stuff and I have to be honest I forgot I was doing like oh uh, my friend Lydia and I were doing the um advent advent scrappy advent giveaway too on our instagrams and that has arrived with the winner i will link a picture of her putting it out and decorating it in her flat um and again congrats to you for winning that and so yeah i was so all over the place that i i decorated her my swapping partners um yeah package too but i didn't put in any chocolate and now i feel bad but she has just put in lots of chocolate and a beautiful uh, card and some really nice words and some tea too. And so I'm so thankful for you. Um, really not sure if she's watching the vlogs, I, um, the podcast. I don't actually think she is. Um, which yeah, it's it's fun to get to know more people from the community. She's also I think she's from 
Belgium. And so maybe Belgium chocolates, maybe that is, she thought that was a great connection. So I'm really so looking forward to having uh, an advent already. Like it's the beginning of November and I feel pretty good like on um, organizing all of that. Um, probably going to do a shared advent with my partner. So he's going to uh, prepare 12 doors, which I think I said is probably best to do mainly like favorite chocolates <laughs> because we did a huge, huge advent the first uh, year we, we were together, which is uh, several years ago. Uh, so there's going to be our fifth Christmas together, I think. I'm not sure. Uh, and so we did that the first year and it was so much fun, but also it was kind of expensive. And I think this year we're thinking about saving some money to get something together. And so, yeah, we're probably go going to do a shared advent. I did an advent for my mom these last two years. And sometimes I feel like the way I am gifting and doing things for other people, I'm setting the bar quite high for myself every following year. So with my gift knitting and like I said, making advents for people, I sometimes be, I'm sometimes I'm like, wow, how am I ever going to achieve that ever again? Um, but yeah, we'll see if I find the time to make one for her too. And yeah, like I said, our advent giveaway on Instagram went so well. So many of you guys, um, had like commented and taken part in it and i was so lovely to read through all of the things you're looking forward to in december and like i said we've drawn a winner she has received the advent uh calendar and she's put it up and i'm so happy about that yeah like i said i have to finish the advent for my friend um I'm probably going to kind of combine it with her birthday, which is also in December because I have some very special things I want to put in and it's kind of blowing the scrap advent 12 day thing that we wanted to do completely out of pro proportions. Uh, but I think she, uh, she won't mind uh, me combining the two things. So I have some ideas, but yeah, I think she watches most of the videos and so I'm not going to talk anymore about that. But yeah, those are some of the Advent things I wanted to talk about and share a bit more about the process because I know so many of you have been doing scrappy and swappy Advents too and I think it's just the most amazing thing. I'm going to probably put, let me just show you quickly, uh, in my, um, this is a homespun house pattern but it's basically just... I don't know, like 200 stitches or something. Like, I don't even know. It's in my project page. This is the, um, what's it called again? It's the something throw. So I, it's my scrappy blanket and I'm going to put the advents colors in here. So I hope they're all uh, about 10 grams too big because I once used um, a color and it was just like nine point something grams and I ran out before the row was over. But I've also been combining some of the colors you can see here with the yellow and here with the brown and like um, reddish color. I'm combining them and yes, I'm really happy. I've also put in all the colorways I got from my friend Chelsea, the scraps I was able to take from her stash. I don't even, I'm not even sure if I talked about this. So this is another long-term um, project and I, I, I adore this blanket. I can't wait to, uh, it is a, a big, um, it's kind of long, but it's not, it's wide, but it's not long yet. But if I'm working on it, it's kind of like a blanket. Um, already like a lap blanket so yeah I will be looking forward to more blanket knitting in December I'm not yet sure if I'll be able to do one stripe a day with just the yarn that I'm getting since I'm also getting the advent from Lydia which is going to be a every other day advent and then I'm also going to get the full skein for Sundays a month, I, th I think, from Phoebe and Mercy from her um, advent this year. So yeah, we'll see what I do. I don't want to pressure myself. 
And with that, uh, I'm not going to make any promises, but I'll hope to do some Vlogmas filming in December. Like I said, no promises at all. I don't want to stress myself out in December and there are so many other people who do it so well. So I'm going to obviously watch Laura Penrose uh, vlog Vlogtober. No. Vlogmas. I think the Crazy Sock Lady does Vlogmas too and there are already people that do it so well. I attempted to do Vlogmas nine years ago. I think it was 2004. 14 on my youtube channel back then i was an au pair living in london and it was hilarious i i think i managed to do like 10 days which is pretty good and it's so nice to have these memories obviously the videos are like private now <laughs> the video quality was so bad and i'm not saying the quality is great now it's just whatever i have available to me it's pretty low tech um maybe i'm gonna get a microphone in the future but <laughs> Yeah, it was. I was filming on my uh, GoPro, if that tells you anything. And I uh, did look pretty different to what I look like now. <clears throat> yeah, I had a huge, I had huge bangs. Uh, yeah, and I thought I'd never live without them. And look at me now, having my center uh, <laughs> parting. I uh, never thought that day would come, but yeah. Sorry, rambling off. Um, okay, stash enhancement is going to be the second to last thing. I'm actually going to put away my iPad because I'm pretty sure I know what I want to say. So this was my wool and twine order. Ordering from wool and twine that I think was like Friday night was so exciting. Like I was, I don't know, like making myself a cup of tea and was knitting in the like refreshing the side and I I thought I knew what I wanted but then like the pull of everything being so kind of limited I'm not saying like she did that like she intended for people to buy more because it was limited but like the way I was affected by the <laughs> the thought of it being limited was like I need to get more but then I actually went back in I took some things out of my basket again uh, I wasn't planning on getting the the sock set, even though I thought it was beautiful. I've actually seen those Deegan wooden acorn things in, I think it was La Mercerie, um, back on Baybridge Island when I was in the US, um, visiting Chelsea. And back then I didn't buy them because I thought they're so cute, but like I had some other things working in a similar way already and they were kind of expensive. Obviously completely justified because they're handmade, but you can't have and like own everything. And that was pretty in, important for me to realize. Like I want to get those two quantities of yarn to make projects with. And other than that, there will be another shop update. There will be another collaboration. There will be another moment where I'll be able to maybe get the Deegan Acorn thing if I really still desperately want it then. Right? Right. Okay, so let's get into what I got. I actually got two plates of the Unspun, which this is the, it's called Thrive, I think. Um, the, 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 what's it called? The base, and it's 100 grams approximately, they say, uh, which it was um, interesting because she didn't have any meat rich linked. I was combining, uh, I was com comparing it to my unspun from Rain Cloud and Sage and the unspun from Plit, like ex the Easter Eggs Plitolopi and some others. And they have about 400 meters on uh, 100 grams. So I was hoping that this would have a similar yardage or meterage. And um, yeah, this is the Colorway Barley. And so this is 200 grams and I hope this is going to be around 800 meters. Um, and I am planning on holding it with a silk mohair to make, um, wow, there's another fly here. Maybe it's the same fly and it just wants to become famous on YouTube, <laughs> it, which is why it's, oh, photobombing my, um, 
my knitting podcast lately. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I just thought that was really beautiful. And uh, if I'm not making a slip over with it, I could also be doing a, I think it's called the Ranunculus. Uh, everyone has made this. Um, not yet sure if it's my taste, but yeah, um, maybe, maybe not. Probably gonna make a slip over with this. And the second thing that I have gotten from her from the Will & Twine Fiber Studio is the BFL Massum, I think it is pronounced Massum, Massum, BFL Massum, the BFL Massum DK weight base in unspun and in chestnut. So this is going to become a Mudo sweater. And I am very much looking forward to making this. Actually, yesterday, another woman from my knitting group, she told me that uh, this is gonna pill like crazy. And so I was thinking maybe of holding it with a um, silk mohair too, but I, I think it's, it's gonna mess up my gauge too much. And this is already quite a pricey product, obviously, since it's such a special UK, um, uh, base so it's blue face Leicester and mid brown massum and uh so yeah this was quite of a splurge <laughs> to say the least uh but I really was looking forward to 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 getting this stuff but then I thought maybe not hold it with another silk mohair that's gonna cost uh that's gonna bring up the cost of the project even more um since this is not dyed um Maybe in another time I will maybe see in, if I could get the undyed stuff from another seller. Actually, my uh, boss has told me about Laxton Mill, I think. And then uh, Rebecca is like um, the Crea Bayer recently in her podcast talked about it too, uh, since they are selling this space too. And I had the tab open on my phone for like, for the last three months, I think. And so I was wasn't sure if I should have maybe gotten it from them but obviously the hand dyed I couldn't have and I just wanted to show you maybe a close-up to see the differences in this gain um, when I first looked at it I thought it was so beautiful and then I found this really light spot on the back and I was f like first I was a bit taken aback by the real like big difference in color and then I looked on her website again and it said that this is just part of the natural dyeing process too. And then I think I can't calm down a bit because I was a bit, I mean, I wasn't, yeah, I was taken aback by it. I was just not sure how to, how to, what to think of it. Uh, because I didn't want a yellow uh, highlight in my, um, in my color work. But yeah, it is hand dyed. And so it's gonna, that's just gonna, that's just how it's going to be. Uh, this is what I was talking about, where it's just a bit different. Um, the rest of it looks like this. And it's just, yeah, this part is just a bit less pigmented. And so, yeah, I'm not yet sure if that's going to be a part where I try to maybe cut it, although I don't want to cut into my color work too much, or if that's just going to be a part where I don't... Um, yeah, I'm actually not sure yet. Um, like I said, I was really, really excited to receive this order. Um, at the end of the day, uh, if I'm not as happy with it, I'm gonna see if I can substitute it with anything in my stash, uh, or if I can just shorten, like do three rounds of color work instead of four, and if that will help with uh, cutting out kind of like the, the areas that haven't been dyed as much. I've also only got uh, four of the undyed, um, the pattern cord for five for the long version and four for the crop version. And I really hope I'm not gonna do, gonna have to do too much of a game of yarn chicken. Um, but yeah, if that is the case, I was thinking on putting in some highlights on uh, the sleeves and the bottom of the, um, of the body too with the highlight color to maybe help with the uh, yarn chicken 
issue that I might be running into. But also, yeah, at the end, like I said, I took out two plates of the Unspun and one of the uh, BFL Massam just because I just, it was quite a pricey uh, cart at that point in time. And I just wanted to condense it down to the things that I really thought I would need. And like I said, with 800 meters, I think I should be fine making a like medium to large size slip over uh, cropped, um, holding it with, holding it single with, uh, um, yeah, a, what did I want to say? A silk mohair. And then with this, I just think I'm going to be able to do it. And actually, I, I just think I'm going to embrace the, um, inconsistencies of the hand dyed since it is hand dyed and natural dyed and um, actually I, I do really like it I was just a bit taken aback because this uh, in the back was so different in color and in her um, in Eula's uh, pre like pre um, in stock update videos where she's showing off the colors you couldn't tell in the skeins that there were any like significant dif differences and so this skein had had me just like a bit unsure of what to think of it but overall I loved receiving all these things I love her label too I really get why other people love her uh, stuff as much too and um, yeah I was really happy to get that um, the last thing that is an acquisition is these uh, stitch markers that uh, Mia from Seaside Stitches has sent me. I'm just gonna briefly show you how this looks like. Um, she has uh, actually asked me if she was, uh, if she could send me some of her handmade stitch markers. Her site is called Seaside Stitches and she also asked me if she could put in some for uh, Lydia as well too, uh, which I thought was so cute. So I'm going to give them to her when I see her next. And yeah, these two um, stitches, like I said, are from Seaside Stitches by Mia. And um, yeah, these are handmade. I love the little acorn, obviously, because I love acorns. And uh, obviously, I like pearls. So this one's really nice, too. Um, I really like the design that she has chosen. And I just saw that she has put in a note for me too. I didn't see that. Oh, okay. I'm gonna read through that uh, with a bit more time uh, after filming. But that was so nice of you, uh, Mia, to, to think of me and Lydia to gift some of your precious stitch markers. And I hope that y'all check out Mia's uh, Etsy and her Instagram to see if you would want to get some of her stitch markers. So yeah, I always like to highlight some small businesses, especially uh, in this community. I think that pretty much consists of mostly women-led small businesses that have kind of made the community also what it is now, uh, the makers and the knitters and the other creatives behind it and so if you would like to check her out I'm gonna link her information down below thanks for sending them to me obviously I wasn't um, how would you say that I didn't have to talk about them but I thought it was just so cute and so I wanted to highlight them and um, now let me get to the last thing that I wanted to get to in this episode before saying goodbye to y'all I am going to be in Barcelona at the Barcelona Knits Festival in two weeks. Uh, I did not think that I would get there this year. Um, I had maybe talked to Chelsea about going there next year or seeing which yeah, festival we could go to. I actually heard about Bar Barcelona Knits for the first time uh, through Kutuba Kikas um, YouTube channel. Most of you probably know her. And I um, sometimes like to, to watch uh, some, of her, some of her videos, sorry. And so uh, when I saw her go there, um, maybe last year, I thought that was really cool seeing that festival there. I have been to Barcelona before once, I think it was in 2019. And then recently my boss, uh, Melanie, she asked me if I had any plans that weekend. And I was like, no, <laughs> I have the week off, uh, the week after to, uh, 
just take some time off work and be with my uh, partner and celebrate his birthday and go on this like short trip but I'm free that weekend why and she's like oh, mm, just thinking about doing a little special th something and looking at some more yarn for the shop and just uh, seeing what the knitting community is like doing what what the community is up to at the moment and so she asked me if I wanted to join uh, and I was like yes <laughs> uh, so this is gonna be half half work trip half uh, private um, pleasure obviously going there um, taking some time to vlog the whole experience for you guys as well too but I'm obviously also going to see uh, some of the stockist I don't know if you would say that some of the brands that we already have in stock and some of the brands that we're thinking about taking on at the shop and so yeah like I said it's gonna be uh, a bit of both um, and I'm very grateful that she uh, asked me to join her um, we then last minute booked the flights booked the Airbnb and we're going there in like I don't know is it it's like two weeks or is it less than two weeks? It's, yeah, I think it's less than two weeks and I'm extremely excited and so grateful for this thing that I really wouldn't have thought that would happen to me like a couple of months, half year ago. And so I'm happy to take you guys along as always. Hope you're looking forward to some Barcelona and its content coming up your way. Also, like I said, follow Strickverliebt on Instagram um, I'm currently doing loads behind the scenes, like the, the marketing aspect of the, the shop and also have taken over a lot of the, the work for the Instagram channel. So um, a lot of what we're doing at the shop, I'm highlighting there. I'm taking pictures and stuff like that. So if you are interested in that at all, you can follow us on Instagram and I will be taking um, y'all along there too so I'm trying to do some filming for my YouTube here but I'm going to do stories for the shop so not not too much on my own uh, stories I don't think uh, if you're not following me on my own Instagram you should definitely do that on uh, at Marlene Knits too like I am called here and I wanted to thank y'all for sticking along with me I hope you got some pretty good pro progress done on your projects if you've been knitting along with me or crocheting or maybe cutting out some sewing fabric or maybe spinning i've been like listening to and even like side eye watching some vlogs recently while spinning and i just found it to be the best thing um thanks again for celebrating my one year podcast anniversary today it is so amazing go check out um rebecca's um, pro ah, sorry, Rebecca Stick Season Sweater on Ravelry. Go give it a like and favorite. And um, I hope you also cast it on soon. And yeah, I'm just so grateful for all of you being here. If you did like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel to um, be notified whenever I post more fiber related fun on here yeah okay i hope you have a great rest of your weekend although i'll probably be posting this monday night hopefully maybe tuesday whatever works out um i am like i said i'm pretty low tech around here um and yeah i hope you're taking care of yourselves i hope you're staying safe i hope you're taking care of others around yourself but also getting some great knitting time and I, that's what I hope for all, all of you guys. All right, bye you guys. See you in a couple of weeks.